Hello everyone, welcome back to Catherine's Plates. Today I'm going to show you how to make a very easy Ritz chicken and pasta casserole. It's going to have a lot of delicious flavor in it, but it's going to be very easy to put together. Y'all ready? Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start preparing one package. This is 12 ounces of egg noodles. I'm just bringing a large pot of water to a boil. Once the water comes to a boil, I'm going to season it with one tablespoon of salt. That will flavor our pasta. I'm going to add in the noodles. I'm going to stir this around. We're going to cook this per the directions on the back of the package, and then you just want to drain them really good. While the pasta is cooking, we're going to go ahead and multitask. We're going to take a rotisserie chicken and we're just going to chop it up into bite-sized pieces. Now I'm lucky enough that every time my husband goes out, he comes back with a chicken. <laughs> and I love to find many ways to prepare it. If you don't have a rotisserie chicken, you can bake your chicken, you can boil your chicken, cook it however you want, and then just chop it up into tiny pieces. So I'm going to take this chicken here. And I'm going to turn it into two cups of chopped chicken. I like the rotisserie chickens because they're very flavorful. I generally like to save the wings, the drumsticks, and the thigh meat for my husband. He likes that as a separate meal. If you have a good sized chicken here, you can pretty much get two cups of chicken off of there. Just using the breast meat, and maybe some thigh meat if you want to add that to it. Now I have a recipe out there for baked chicken and it's a great recipe you can change the seasonings on it whatever you want to do but it makes the most moist chicken very delicious so I'll link it down below in the description box you can find it on my recipe blog katherinesplates.com and just look up baked chicken I want it in nice sized pieces that way you can distribute in the casserole In a large bowl, we're going to start putting some amazing flavors. The first thing we've got, a can of cream of celery soup. You can use cream of chicken soup, or if you want a different flavor, you can even add in cream of mushroom soup. Get this out. 10.5 ounces. I love the cream of celery soup. It's got such a good flavor to it. All right, I'm just going to add about a quarter cup of chicken broth into the can. Stir that up and get that excess out of there. I'm going to add in one can. It's 15 ounces of sweet peas. Make sure you drain them. We're going to add in one can of sliced carrots. Make sure you drain them. Now you can add in one cup of sour cream or you can use some heavy whipping cream, about half a cup. We're going to add in the cooked chicken. We're going to add in the cooked pasta. Now. You don't have to use egg noodles. You can cook up any pasta you want for this dish. Just make sure you cook it per the directions on the back of the package because you want them nice and tender. We're going to season this like we love our family. <laughs> All right, I've got some onion powder. You can put about a quarter teaspoon of all of the seasonings in. I'm just going to shake it across the top. You, know, you can also chop up an onion if you want to put an onion in there. I would saute it down a little bit. Garlic powder. Italian seasoning. Some 
black pepper. Some salt. We're just going to start low with the salt. We've got a lot of things happening that have the salt in it already. All right, grab a big spoon and blend this all together. Let it soak up all those delicious flavors. And then just be careful, you don't want to smash your peas or your carrots. You don't have to put peas and carrots in here. Any kind of canned vegetable or frozen vegetable, you just want to make sure they're cooked because this isn't going to cook in the oven very long. And so you just kind of want to make sure that if you're going to put broccoli in here, that it's kind of tender before it goes in. So you want to make sure your vegetables are thawed and drained before you put them in here if you're going to use those. I mean, you can add corn to this, green beans. Oh, it smells delicious. Once you get a good mix on it, grab a fork, go in, take a bite, Make sure your flavors are where you'll want them. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Yeah. That's good. Oh, let's put that in our 9 by 13 baking dish. Make sure you always spray your baking dish with nonstick cooking spray for casseroles. That way they don't stick. You can even butter it if you want to. You'll need about a 9 by 13 baking dish. All right, smooth it out evenly. Oh, nice and creamy. We got more delicious flavors coming. We've got to top off a casserole with cheese. Sharp cheddar cheese spread across the whole top of it. Your family will love you for that. It's an optional ingredient though. If you don't want to put it on, you don't have to put it on. It's about eight ounces. We're going to make a topping. What we're going to do is take some Ritz crackers, because that's what it's all about. We're going to take two sleeves. I'm just going to place them in a Ziploc bag and crush them up until we get crumbs. Pour the crumbs into a medium bowl. I've melted one stick or half a cup of butter. Pour that into the crumbs. Mix this all together. Okay, we're going to take the topping of the breadcrumb butter mixture and we're going to put it all over the cheese. Okay, we're going to pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes until the breadcrumbs are nice and golden brown on top. The cheese is melted and the casserole is heated through. Okay, we're gonna let this cool down for about 10 minutes and then dig in. All right, there it is. My Ritz chicken and pasta casserole. We should put that word cheesy in there too, huh? <laughs> let me grab a fork. Creamy, cheesy, pasta, chicken, a full meal here. Mm. It 
And don't forget we got those vegetables in there. That does make a full meal. That's very delicious. This is the only way. Well, it's the second way that I can get my husband to eat canned peas. He likes them in beef stew also. Mmm. That's good. That buttery crunch on top. Ooh, it just makes it. Give me a thumbs up, you guys. Comment down below what you think. What vegetables would you put in it? <laughs> All right, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification because you want to be notified as soon as I put videos out every day. I'll see you on my next episode.